What's going on, y'all? So What's going on, y'all? So we are back again. Hold on. There we go. We are back again for another episode review of Love & Hip Hop Family Reunion VH1 Presents Season 1 Episode 3 Until Freedom. Okay, so we get up into the episode and um, we start off in the most niggified way. <laughs> Trick Daddy. Trick Daddy is in his hotel room, okay? Inside of his hotel room with a hot, uh, with a deep fryer, okay? And deep frying pork chops. This is in the morning. This is in the morning. I said, what in the nigga? Girl, leave it a trick. Trick keeping it all the way real, okay? He said that's the way to, you know, you got to cook and all that stuff, whatever. So, you know, they do that. Um, uh, Sierra's is in charge of doing like a little, putting together like a little spa day for the women, whatever. And they do have that. And everybody comes except for Erica and Yandy. You know, Sierra's like... At this point, she don't want Erica to come because it's too soon with the Bambi situation and the Scrappy situation. It didn't bring Erica in the mix. It's just a little bit too soon for all of that. So we just going to, you know, sit her off to the staff now. Yandy, she's getting ready for a, 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 an event that she's putting on, like the Black Lives Matter event. You know, she's inviting Tamika Mallory and Mason uh, there to talk or whatever. You know, and she was in the room talking to... um. Mendici about it and you know thinking about the impact and unfortunately what we have to go through or what this country has been going through especially black people have been going through with social injustice and you know getting the word out there and trying to uh get everybody healed and you know get everybody on board and you know put this word out there to all your millions of followers and stuff like that and trying to make an impact and, you know she's a little bit nervous about talking so she's got to get her speech together and it was really cool that many Mendeecees was there giving her encouragement. Baby, you got this and all this stuff. Meanwhile, back at the spa, Trina and Joy, they didn't show up because, you know, they was a little bit too lit the night before, so they had to sleep it off. And they was just sitting there talking about, you know, um, relaxation and, you know, the stress of it all. And then they get into somehow with Brandy. She, Brandy, Bambi, she was just talking about how, you know, She's going through a lot and people don't see what she's going through dealing with trying to be a stepmother, trying to be a good stepmother, trying to be a wife, trying to be a mother, period. And the issues that's going on in her marriage and all this stuff. And then the fact that Mama D is there, you know, meddling and stuff. And they offered her encouragement and they came together as women, as a sisterhood in that moment, I will say, and gave her the encouragement that she needed. And then you got Sierra saying, you know, you set the example for me to be a better stepmom. You know, I see what you're doing and it made me want to step my game up. And Carly Red is giving her, you know, bigging her up as well, you know. And so Bambi, you know, she's tears up because this is what she needed to hear. She's going through a lot you know, dealing with Scrappy and his mess and, you know, being a mother and all that stuff. So, yeah, it was really nice. Okay, so on the first, on the, at the beginning of this episode, we starting off real good. Everybody's being real nice, whatever, and I'm loving where it's going. We got Jock and his son, Armani, uh, Armani. They out there, you know, exercising or whatever, and he's having a man-to-man -man talk to him about what he needs to do, okay? And not necessarily a man-to-man, -man, a father-to-son, okay? You know, we get a background, a little bit of the background with Jock and Amani, and, you know, he's his oldest son. He's his oldest child, period, but his oldest son as well. And we find out that Jock and him didn't have that close of a relationship when they were growing up, when he was growing up. And he sees now that, you know, Jack is trying to put forth that effort and to become closer. And, you know, he was here for it. And I'm glad that it's going that way where, you know, the the son, the kid is receptive to the parent trying to make up for what they, you know, the time that they lost and trying to better their situation and not holding a grudge or whatever. And, you know, Jock is trying to put his foot down and tell him, you got to change your ways. You know, he got arrested for doing some donuts in the uh, parking lot of his club, you know, Jock's in front of Jock's club, you know, so he got that charge on him. 
Uh, and if y'all don't know what donuts is with the cars and stuff, circling and all that stuff, Fast and the Furious, goddamn it, bitch. Okay, that's for the slow people. Well, I don't want to call you slow. That's for the people that didn't know, okay? But yeah, so that was going on. And, you know, he's just concerned about, first of fucking all, it started off on a funny note, but it was actually kind of serious. He was like, so you feeling Jasmine, you know, Carly's uh, daughter or whatever. And, you know, he was like, yeah, I mean, she all right or whatever. He was like, you brought protection. He was like, yeah, I brought three boxes. He said, bitch, what the fuck? <laughs> what you thought you was going to do? He said, listen, I'm going to be prepared for any and everything at all times. I said, I know that's right. Come on, young man. Had them condoms ready because some of these kids and some of these grown-ass folks don't do that, okay? But anyway, you know, Jack is just trying to steer him in the right direction, not go down the path that he went through and, you know, hanging out with shady people and questionable people and bad people. And, you know, they lost a lot of loved ones already that year, especially they highlighted uh, his cousin, no, Jack's nephew, um, who passed away, who actually was murdered in front of his club. You know what I'm saying? So... That was a lie, and he just don't want his son to go down the wrong path. And, you know, I love seeing black men with their kids and bonding like that. So, so far, so good. I am still tripped out on the fact that Trick Daddy had that goddamn, he was deep frying them pork chops. I said, them motherfuckers look good, too. And I ain't ate a pork chop in years, bitch, okay? I'm trying to wash my figure, okay? Stay away from the fried food. Bitch, after next week, Ashley ain't gonna be able to eat the shit no way. Anyway, um... Yeah. So, um, while the girls are out there at the spa, you know, the guys, they kind of get together, whatever. They commiserating about how things are going. And, of course, uh, you know, uh, Jock and them, they bring up Jazz and how, you know, she looked like Carly in her prime. Let me just tell you this. Girl, say what you want about Carly. Carly do look good, okay? And her daughter, it literally looked like, like, I've seen daughters and mothers that look exactly i've seen them look like similar okay but carly and her daughter bitch it looked like carly literally cloned herself okay and called her jasmine that's what it is you know they look literally identical all right um you just tell that Carly is a little bit older. Bitch, I just really want to know her real age, okay? Ain't no way in here. Like, it's cool. Like, I like them old fish. You know, it's... It's, it's vent... Ooh, I sound like Charlemagne. Remember when he used to say vintage push? That is... that I cannot understand how he got away with that shit. And everybody let him say that. But anyway, um, moving on from that. Yeah, they was just talking about that stuff. You know, um, and then they was over there. The women were talking about how everything was good and, you know, how they glad that, you know, Sierra was saying how she's glad that her and Carly has made up. And, you know, they was just, you know, vibing. And you have April that was just sitting there like, you know, it's really good to see that Sierra and, you know, Carly made up. It just made her look at the situation between her and Paris as meniscal because, um, you know, they had their little issues. At first, I had forgot why they was even beefing. Bitch, I didn't even know they was even beefing or had their little issues or whatever. It was because Paris called them out on, um, you know, messing around with Fizz and they got into it at the, uh, you know, reunion or whatever. And I was like, yeah, that's kind of small stuff, okay? Whatever. She was just being nosy. It really wasn't her business. But, you know, what you did, what you did. And we wanted to know, so hell. Paris took the bullet for us, okay? But um, anyway, next thing you know, Sierra was like, listen, Jasmine, you know your mama love you so much. Like, when we, let me just tease her. I'm so glad that I got to spend some time with you because, listen, listen, no, listen, for real, for real. Like, when me and Corelli be up there doing some serious stuff, whatever, all of a sudden she'll get a phone call from you and she'll have to stop the phone call and she'll just go ahead, stop the, whatever we do and just go ahead and talk to you. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm sitting here like April, mind you, she probably was sitting there like this. Because of the sun that was in her face. That's what I'm going to on. But baby, I was sitting here like this. Ain't no sun in my face. It's just because I was like, girl, what you crying for? I would have been like, oh, that's my mom's or whatever because she loved me or whatever. That ain't enough to make me cry. But, you know, I see that she a little sensitive type of girl. So I'm not going to hold it against her. But I was sitting there just like April was. April was like, 
I was like, the fuck you crying for? But she really broke down crying. I thought it was sweet, but I also, you know, me, I ain't into all those emotions like that, you know, that comes out of nowhere. And I be like, girl, what the fuck? That's why I be trying to figure it out. That's where it be coming from. I'm not cold-hearted. Let me step that back a little bit. I'm not all the time cold-hearted. There you go. Okay, I can sympathize and empathize sometimes or whatever. But it was cute, you know. Um, but we find out that Carly and her daughter have issues. And, you know, mostly her daughter has issues with Carly at the fact that, you know, they have a sit down and she was like, you know, she just wished her mother could have been there more for her the way that she is with her friends. You know, hearing people talking about these experiences that she has with her friends and not that she has with her. And so she talked to her about it and, you know, she was like, it's hard to be around you sometimes. You know, it's not as easy because, you know, it's like she kind of hard on her. Okay. And, you know, Carly said it's because she don't want her to go through anything that she went through and she don't want her to want she didn't want her to want for anything okay and she put in a lot of hard work so that's how it came in and you know she's a single parent and stuff like that so of course once again in that situation i can understand the tears because that would have got me too having a heart to heart with your parents or whatever that you know i was looking at let me just tell y'all this i don't know if y'all watch it i did talk about it at least one time on my channel um i did a whole video about a particular situation about this show uh, Chasing Atlanta, okay? It's a web series on um, YouTube, you know, LGBT well, uh, web series. And I just, I don't know what took me so long, but I finally went on ahead and watched the uh, part two of the reunion for the latest season. And Lauren England's, it's a character on there, Lauren England, you know, she's transitioning um, and she used to be formerly known as Jalen and she's transitioning to Lauren England. And, you know, she performed or whatever, and her father was there, and her father was actually given all of the support to see their relationship, and they had this whole moment. Bitch, I'm at work like this. This is some beautiful shit. That's how I was when I was looking at I was like, I really wasn't, I wasn't crying nothing, but I was like, I understand. Like, I get shit like that, because if I, I had heart-to-heart -heart conversations rarely with my mom, and then when I do, bitch tears especially when i'm going through a whole bunch of stuff girl i that's me okay that's me but it was cute so at this point the girls have separated and we have uh sierra and bambi sitting down there talking and basically talking about what they're going through you know bambi she was like this spa day then it, it came at the right time she really needed it uh, because of the stress that she's under and, you know, the situation, she opened up her shop at the beginning of the year and I guess, I guess it must have closed down. I don't know. It's probably not doing what it was supposed to because of this pandemic. She's been affected by it, you know, and then being in the house was scrappy all the time and not feeling appreciated and, you know, <laughs> Just the situation or whatever, trying to make her feel like she's not doing enough because she's saying, you know, she's tired from this and she's this and that. And then he like, well, what about me? I got all this stuff going on, too. And he goes, see, I see, that's what my ex-husband used to make me feel like every time, like, he got so much stuff going on, not trying to hit me and everything. And then they get into the whole situation with, you know, trying to fix the relationship between Erica and Scrappy. And it's like, you know, with Imani, Imani she, she growing up and she, we do have to think about the child. And even though I said last week, like, why do they need to see each other at this point? Just, you know, if he's paying the child support, if he's seeing money on time and, and, and giving, being a father to her, Erica and him don't have to interact really. Okay. But, you know, I did forget about the fact that they do in the midst of that, the child can also pick up on this stuff and be affected by that. And that's what they was bringing out. So they do have to fix their issues because at this point, I don't understand why there is an issue. Unless y'all still secretly in love with each other, which it makes me feel like, you know, and I've seen somebody say something about Erica probably was the one that got away from Scrappy. And he feels some type of way. And she probably do too. But I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. Like, if y'all both moved on and got your own family erica got her twins you got your two kids like let it go and be grown-ups okay um moving on from that we get to the fellas they sit down uh scrappy and brought over some pizza couldn't find out jock and mndc no 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 pork on my fork 
no beef in my teeth, okay? They don't eat pork. They don't eat beef. You know what I'm saying? Um, so they was talking about that. Then they were talking about the relationships that they have with their wives and stuff and their respective wives and, you know, Mendici and how it's been for Mendici since he's been out. And he was like, you know, ever since I've been out, it's just been a little different. Like this quarantine stuff, we'd be up in the house all the time. And like the issues between me and my wife, we arguing over petty shit. Okay. She up here doing all this work and whatever. And I'm sitting here like, where the food at? You know, I'm like, bitch, get your ass up and go. Let me tell you something. If I hear one more nigga say, where the food at? Like you ain't got two legs and two arms and two, two hands with 10 fingers on there all together. Like you can't get up and fix her something. Do that for once in a while. I mean, I'm just saying like you can fix yourself something too. Okay. Um, be thoughtful, all right? Because she the one that's the breadwinner. You know, you having issues getting the money and all this stuff because of your felony background and stuff like that. So, you know, she had to step up. Like, I get it, but, you know, come on now. And then, Ray J. This whole, we are on episode three. And the whole time, I am sitting here like, the fuck is Ray J doing on here? Ray J is on here for comedic relief. That is it, okay? Ray J was talking about the wild boars and stuff that was in front of his door looking like dinosaurs and stuff. That was early in the episode. This time, he's talking about his relationship with Pinky, Prinky, okay? Princess Love and, um, girl, when he said... So it's like me and her, we still love each other or whatever. But at the end of the day, you know, I found out that, you know, she filed for divorce first. Okay. I found that out on TMZ. Bitch, I was sitting here like, damn. So y'all really doing tit for tat shit? Because didn't he find out on TMZ or in the media too about her filing for, no, she found out about him filing for divorce on her in the media too. I said, what in the hell? He was like, my mom called me up saying, is this real or whatever? So I'm thinking like, I mean, if she put it out there, I guess it's real or whatever. So I go buy a bigger house or whatever. Next thing you know, we get back into a whole nother argument. It's over some petty shit. And she tell me, Go to your room. She calling me ugly, calling me stupid or whatever, and then going to tell me to go back to my room. It was like, what? That's a new one. Everybody was like, go to your room. Then we got Bambi and Scrappy talking about something. First of all, you know, I'm a grown-ass man. You ain't finna tell me to go to my goddamn room. Bambi was like, she told him to go to his room, as she should, as she should. Bitch, I'm sitting here like, I don't know how I feel about that. I would have liked to been there when she said that shit, bitch. I would have laughed in her face. Tell me to go to my room, bitch. I would have laughed in your face. I said, girl, a mess. That is why Ray J here. Did you see when they were sitting there talking and he was eating that chicken before he ate that chicken the way he was examining it? I said, Ray J, this is why we can't take your ass serious. So, Trick sees Joy, okay? Tells her you need to take your ass up in there and you need to put some clothes on. Magic, she just in her robe. She came out for something or whatever and went back in. And he was like, you got to respect your husband and all that stuff. Or I'm going to change your name or whatever to thug life and all that. Girl, I'm sitting here like, Trick and Joy, she said, first of all, we're divorcing. You know, and Trick was talking about, I mean... It hurts, okay? I'm hurt, okay? That's what it is. Like, we tried to make it work. You know, she filed for divorce on my ass or whatever. And I'm saying, like, she ain't got to, uh, it ain't, I ain't saying she can't move on to be with somebody, but I just need to pick the nigga. I said, what type of logic? He said, you was with me. You can't be with, basically, like, I want to pick somebody that's better than me. You know what I'm saying? I don't want you to get with somebody that, like, I'm looking at you like, that's the best you can do. I'm sitting here like, niggas ain't shit, okay? Uh, you know, so they talking about that. They get into talking about, girl, what else they were talking about? The girls talking about the mammals and stuff that was there. Um, April and Paris have a little conversation and they clear up their little issues that they had. Bitch, don't nobody care. Okay, they talking to Fizz about what's going on between him and April and all that stuff. Where they get back together. He was like, he's single. It is what it is. He don't do no back stuff or whatever. They can't be friends. I said, what type of shit? Girl, it was confusing, okay? They ain't together. That's all that it is. They probably fucking on the low, but they just not together. Meanwhile, um, you know... 
Trick Daddy talking about her. I thought she was a little Asian, like a little Tiger Woods type of situation going on. You know, he he the president of the Eat the Booty Gang. I was like, boy, shut up. Then they started talking about, you know, kids and the baby mamas. And the, the best thing about that is having the kids. And, you know, Mendesis was in the midst of saying, you know, how it's so good when you come in and you see them just coming up there. Daddy, and right then and there, Jock. Something happened with Jock, okay? He gasped. I was like, oh, my God, that was some real shit right there, you know? And um, they was like, what's going on? He got a message or something, and he just left the table, and I was just like, oh, shit. So what wound up happening is, you know, Jock just got the message. Bitch, let me see you something. I ain't going to lie. If you tell, it can't get to me. It can't get to me, bitch. I was sitting here like, oh, my God. Like, that shit hurt. That shit hurt. I don't like seeing people crap from losing somebody that they know closely, especially, you know. Um, it does something to me. Like I said, I can be cold-hearted sometimes, but, you know, sometimes that shit will defrost and the emotions will come out and it came out a little bit right then and there. I feel bad for Jock, you know. Uh, Mo3, the rapper, Texas rapper who was killed on the highway um, due to gun uh, violence or whatever. Uh, that's who passed away. That was his friend. And, you know, it just, you know, it just hit him real hard. And, of course, the guys were trying to comfort him. And then he went in there to talk to his son about it. And when he was just telling his son, you know, I like the fact that his son was there. Like, he had a loved one besides Scrappy that was really, really close to him that, you know, was there to comfort him and, you know, for his son to get to see that side of him because he said, you know, they working on this relationship and it goes to show that they're in a better place because his father can be open with him and to see his emotion. He see that he does have a heart, you know, so that was a good, that was a good look for me. And then Yandy brings out Tamika Mallory and uh, Mason to come out there, you know, to speak on the Black Lives Matter situation. And, you know, we know how that go. It was deep. It was real deep. And, you know, the episode ends with them sitting down. You know, they continue to have a conversation. They sit down. They acknowledge Jock, um, acknowledge the issues that's been going on and, you know, it just got deep and on that level. Uh, I'm, I'm just, I'm not trying to, like, breeze over what's happening but it's just it's getting a lot because <laughs> every reality show especially every black reality show that comes back on they have been talking about black lives matter they has been talking about covid and you know what more can you say like i've been saying the same thing and i agree with them and i don't think we need to rehash we know what's going on and we, most of us have similar feelings about what's going on with the Black Lives Matter. But I'm glad that they were able to address it. Because at this moment, I know we don't want to hear so much about it. But that's part of the reality. Because especially with a person like Andy, she was on the front lines. You know what I'm saying? So, of course, it has to be addressed, you know. So, I appreciate that. Um, they acknowledged Jock and his uh, un unfortunate situation bitch they had april up in the um confession talking about black lives matter you know because she's raising kids uh black kids or whatever and then they had trina girl we ain't forget what happened when that whole situation went down when you was talking about them looters and uh calling them looters and you know putting their asses on curfew and shit like that but okay Okay, maybe you just seen the light or whatever. They didn't get in that ass. And, you know, we got a different tune, bitch. But, um, uh, everybody's willing to change. But, anyway, that was the episode. Y'all tell me how y'all felt about it. You know, it was cute at the beginning. It got real deep at the end. Okay, I don't know, bitch. But y'all tell me how y'all feel about it. And I'll see y'all next week. Well, okay, yeah, I will. I will. It's Tuesday. I'll see y'all next week. Peace.